Grant Williams has come out four weeks, clear finish. So my, my layman again, I'm just asking, mm -hmm. incidents happen in the same game. Why is one delayed and one not coming up to the same time? Surely, you know, educate me here. Well, it depends on the coaching staff. So it depends on the, who the judicial officer is assigned to the, the case or cases. Um, being different sides, one in Durban, one in Pretoria, potentially two different judicial officers that will be assigned to their cases. And from there, they'll take the matter forward as per any you know, point of order in law. Uh, with regards to the correspondence between the two, the submission of documents, and then you know, they'll have their adjudication panel that will probably video conference uh, with, with the player and his representative and take it from there and take them through the incidents, uh, what are the mitigating circumstances, if there are any. Uh, more importantly, what is the player himself admitted or submitted mm. regarding his actions on the field of play? So when you say players are, are submitting stuff, well, what do they normally submit? Well, it'll just be sort of, you know, what he thought happened of the incident. Yeah. Uh, clearly, they'll hopefully go through the incident on television and uh, see where they've made, made errors, or, you know, be they technical or errors at the particular time. In the case of Williams, the tackle, the, you know, the speed of coming off the line, the head clash, etc. So th that would be the submissions that he'd make and his representative would make towards the judicial yeah. committee. Yeah, yeah, I bring the question up, Swiss, because, I mean, I sit at home and I'm watching with my friends, boom, and I thought, you know, should have been, couldn't have been what story. Wednesday, Thursday, boom, four weeks, I know. Now I'm still waiting for Mornay. You know, you, you're trying to explain to me how the whole procedure works and thanks for the info, but logic once again for me is like, well, I'm waiting what's happening because guys need to travel this week. They're playing overseas. And, uh, and, and Mornay's, you know, they're saying the decision will come on Monday. So even, even then, it kind of affects the, the travel plans for Jake White in terms of is he available, is he not available? What's the story? Because if the, the ruling comes tomorrow... Is he on the plane with the Bulls or not? Well, I, see. I, I think potentially he's on the plane, which is what, probably why they're delaying it. Um, I don't think his incident, I think it was more stupidity than anything, for a guy that's experienced as he is. Um, and I don't think it deserves more than probably two weeks at best. But I'm afraid, I, I think the Grant Williams one I thought was a lot worse in view of the fact of the injury sustained by the player, uh, Chris Smith. So for, for me, it was a, a, a much harder collision and one that I thought probably deserved more action as opposed to a more sustained one, which in, in the nicest possible way was a lazy tackle. So, Robbie Kempson says the Grant Williams incident was more malicious than more stay. The public, I'll say, I know it's a bit old news, the last couple of weeks saw a swinging arm. One of our pundits, Skulk Berger, sees it totally different from Kemper. Let's hear the thoughts of, of Skulk. Kemper, <laughs> smile about this one. I mean, I mean, when, when you come you... out of line, you, see, you size someone up, you're obviously going to put yeah. this high force involved because you want to be the enforcer. You want to dominate that context situation. Someone moves their head. You're in the perfect tackling position. It's not a high shot. It's a head clash. The onus is on player to protect the opposite number that he's tackling. So he's 100% right. Mm -hmm. It's a head clash with high impact and high force that deserves four to six weeks. So you're saying a swinging arm is less... Dangerous than me and knocking heads with what Swiss. That's what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, you know, for me. <laughs> well, well, well it's, it's, it's here. I'm saying that, uh, yes, Mordor Stein's case, it was hardly a swinging arm. He got his red card, but for me, it, it, there was no malicious intent. There was no way he was going to injure the opposite number that he, he did. And certainly after the incident, Lukanya um, gets up and he's absolutely fine. Um, again, very sloppy from Mordor Stein. The other one I find is high impact. There's an intent, there's a force, and there's an injury to the player on the ground. I think something very key you say. The outcome say, is very important. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something here. You say Lucano gets up. Chris Smith did it. Does that have an impact in terms of the decision? So you, you submit a medical report. Yeah. Or so the player on the bull side will submit a uh, medical report saying, from this incident, this is what occurred to the player, Chris Smith. So sometimes, particularly when you're playing overseas team, they'll bump up that medical report yeah. depending on who the player is so he doesn't play the next week. This is brilliant because, I mean, I always look at it and, and I'm getting emotional as a fan, as a this, and thinking, what, well, this happened, this happened. Now, you're saying the medical report of what happened to the player also has an impact well, yeah, on the ruling. Yeah, so the assistant referee's report, the referee's yeah, report. They, yeah, they look at all factors and at all they come to the conclusion. For, for me, there's not a bigger sin and a smaller sin. Uh -huh. If you, if it's head contact, it's guilty, and then you've got to work it down. But I can't, uh, our opinions vary so much on this one. For me, Grant Williams, 
was that happens. I'm, I'm with Skulk there. It just happens. It almost a, hit, a run into one another. Two guys upright running into one another. Mornay's one. Mornay's one for me was more intentional. It was already passed. There was to, uh, uh, to one or two seconds where he could have made up his mind. I can't do this. And it was, and, and it was I. So, but guys, uh, to wait so long for, for, for must be terrible on the coaching staff because the, the, the one fly-off got the head shot. The other one has got the, has got the earring coming up. Bring it, Campbell. You disagree with me there, <laughs> just, No, Swayze, I think there's an argument for both sides. Again, I'm going back to the point. The player is severely injured. He's potentially not going on to a view of a concussion. And I do honestly think that the higher impact deserves a higher sentence because you are actually injuring a player. In this yep. case, is exactly what happened. But I will not, if I want to hurt a guy, I'll try anything. I'll maybe hit him with a head here yeah, or something. I will not run into him, kamikaze stuff just like this. So... so if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So, Swayze Kemper, I mean, let's move a bit closer here. I, I want to know something. I've got ball in hand. Yeah. And, the, and I've got a chance to shut the ball down here. How should that tackle go now? Because Grant Williams, kids, spot tackle, I want to I kill the ball here. Yeah. What happens now? That technique has to change. Well, he's got to lower his body height as per any tackle. If I come low... Make sure it's legal. If I come low, he frees his arms, he makes the pass. Yeah. Maybe you're hitting ball and all, but you're not hitting him with, his, with your head. Only Jacques yeah. Berger does that, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it depends where's my position as yeah. well. I would say if, if I, Chris Smith went low down and you hit a different story, but Chris was upright as well, and that makes your stuff mm. more uh, coming into play a bit, Robbie. That, that, that is guilty. It mm. it's, deserves the whole thing. For me, it, it, for me, it was an unintentional. I can't mm. really see so, that a guy will run into a guy with his face. And... <laughs> And, and it's a bad luck collision. You know, I've, I've raised this question before on this show, and the biggest thing about law changes, they impact on the coaching so much. True. So much. 100%. And yet, I, I don't think it goes the other way around. That we've made, I think it was uh, Cheslin Colby, when he's up in the air, keep his eyes on, got a yellow card because he took the player out of the air. But he's done everything taught since he was a kid. Keep your eyes on the ball, keep going, keep going, go up. Boom, he plays the other guy who's then jumped a bit further than him or higher than him, boom, penalty against him, red card, changes the game. And I just still say the laws impact on the coaching so much. Because you've got, you got to almost undo everything that has been taught before. Yeah, the ultimate with head clash is player safety. Yeah. They want to prevent concussions, they want to prevent head injuries and protect the safety of the player. So you've got to coach in any sphere, in this, in this case poor tackle t uh, technique, that exactly what he needs to do in that case. Is he's it? shooting out of line. He's, he's got to get his body position right so he doesn't impact on the player's head. I might have my, fa my, my facts wrong here, Owen, mm. but slinging a guy to the ground, taking his feet underneath him and he lands on his neck and head like that slingshot, that for me, speaking to Rob Collins a while back when I was with him, he said to me, that is the dangerous stuff. The normal head collisions, it's all, almost like it's dangerous and mm. we don't want that. But that's not really the... the uh, look, I don't know what's the long-lasting effects on those, yeah. but, but for the concussion straight away, it's often the slinging guy where you get whipped and your head goes that way and then, and, and, and then the, the concussion.